brought to you by Diamond P Industries, an American manufacturing company making parts for Americans by Americans. Hello everyone, my name is Garen Phillips and today I'm presenting to you the Diamond P 3D printed half scale 681 supercharger. I'll also be releasing the price on the 8th scale, uh, but first I want to show you the half scale, a little bit about it, uh, how it was designed. <coughs> and here it is, I got the uh, front uh, cover and snout off with the gears <coughs> and as you can see the real 671 casting which was uh, created from the exact same model that this was created from if you'd like to see how this was created you can uh, check out the video here <coughs> but uh, here is the half scale uh, it's in working order everything is running fine <coughs> spins over really nicely and then actually you can actually feel the air uh, being pushed from it when you uh, spin it. I can't do it now because I have to have one hand on a camera. You can also see here the rotors fed through the bearings and each gear is actually designed and clocked together so that they will fit no matter what. I can take them off and spin them. doesn't really matter. They'll all fit together no matter what. They mesh fine. I the reason I created these uh, straight gut gears, I know some people were asking on some forums why I did this, but uh, just for strength because the plastic I didn't want to worry about the helical gears but the 8th scale will actually have helical gears and I will show that to you in a second um, put the front plate or the front cover on here it's a bit hard to do with one hand and I'll also take you down to the 3D printer in a second to show you how it was made and how it works and explain to you uh, how a 3D printer works and put the snout on. I actually only reamed one hole in this snout. Uh, but all these plates are dowel pinned. I didn't bother with uh, threading them or anything for the bolts because uh, most of the time when people come into the shop they actually see this and think it's really cool and want to tear it apart. So I just left it to the dowel pins. Yeah, it's good enough. Um, but one thing to note with the uh, plates is these plates were actually the real plates here have the front bearing plate. Um, same model created from the same thing um, but this this plate was actually created from the 3d printer the same 3d printer that printed this um, and how that worked is we just designed the model printed it out and we sent it to a match plate company and the company made the match plate sent it back to us and we started making castings and this is the finished machine product so this thing was actually created by a 3d printer the housing was done a bit different but uh, here is the 8 scale and you can see a few design changes and differences uh, one of the most noticeably is the coupling actually out of the snout um, this one is internal as uh, across and this one is actually cut out and the reason I did this is merely because I was afraid of uh, the strength because when this is fully built and printed out it will only be 6 inches long from the snout to the uh, rear plate so I was afraid that it would be too weak making it like this and also you get into some detail problems when you're printing stuff that small <coughs> um, the rotors will be 60 degree helix and uh, also one of the other features uh, you can see different is right here the uh, top face does uh, actually not extend to the plate as it does here and uh, the 8 scale will be cut completely out and around into the bottom too to fit perfectly with the covers or the uh, bearing plates <clears throat> and as you can see here that the housing was not cut to fit the uh, bearing plate now unfortunately the 8 scale is going to be about 125 to 135 dollars uh, somewhere around there um, that's as low as we could get it the material for this printer is unfortunately very expensive and uh, it would actually be around 200 to 300 dollars if we charge our actual shop rate but we figured we'd just sell these because uh, they're pretty cool little neat desk ornament to put down if you uh, want one but I will now take you down to the printer and actually show you how it works and everything and uh, after the printer I will actually take a quick walk through the shop and show everyone our actual facility and everything that we do or at least a section of it we have multiple buildings
Okay. Uh, okay, I'll be, I'll be there in a minute. Okay, but here is the 3D printer. Um, current one we have. It's a uh, made by Dimensions, which is actually a company I believe owned by Stratasys Stratus or something like that. I can't really pronounce the name of it. Uh, but here it is running. And right now it is actually printing a 3D printer. So our 3D printer is printing a 3D printer. Um, for anybody that's been following me on the forums, uh, you know that I've been discussing building a 3D printer. And actually here's the first pallet of all the pieces needed for the printer. And here is all the pieces that I purchased. <laughs> and for anyone that might be new to my videos, this might be if this is the first one that you've seen. Uh, basically what it is that I do is my job is to design, create, and put into manufacturing and production and also sell products for my company, uh, Diamond P Industries and Phillips Founders and Castings, which is a aluminum foundry and CNC shop that was started back in 1947 by my grandfather, it's still family owned today. <laughs> um, but I've been making videos, educational videos, showing people the processes of manufacturing and hopefully shed some light on the common day person and showing them how they might be able to get their own idea turned into an actual creation. But here is the 3D pieces. Um, everything was printed out. Uh, you can see the black stuff here is actually support material and this dissolves in a bath that I put the parts in and it's used for uh, creating shapes uh, like holes and stuff throughout a part that uh, because when this is laid down the plastic is hot about 300 degrees and it will actually like it will deform and lay over if you don't have support so that's what's nice about this printer um, the 3D printer that I'm going to be making does not use support but you can check out uh, this printer it's called a RepRap and the version of the, uh, this printer is called a Mendel Prussia and that is the cheapest and lightest weight version to date um, and while it might be the lightest weight and cheapest, it actually, I believe, is the most accurate and easiest to build from what I've read online. Uh, I will be making a video on a basic overview of building it. I won't go, I won't make a tutorial on making this thing because I'll actually be watching a tutorial that can be found on the website of RepRap, which is uh, reprap.org. Um, and under the Mental Prussia section, you can find all the videos needed to make this. And it gives a lot of in depth detail on how it works and stuff. Um, I will make a video after this though explaining how a 3D printer works. I won't do it in this video just to save time. Uh, you can also check out uh, some of my videos on manufacturing on my web or on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you're looking to actually buy this printer, uh, there's a lot of different retailers depending on where you live. I live in Indiana and I bought this out of Canada for about 550 off of a website called a2A printer or printing, I can't remember, dot com. Uh, I'll have a link in the description. <clears throat> but this is everything I need to make the printer, all the pieces that aren't printed out. And what's cool about the RepRap is it's actually a open source 3D printer. So the community online actually develops and improves the printer and posts everything for free. And you can build this all for free and no charge. Well, besides the parts, obviously but the information is free in the software and I'll also go through how the software and everything works and explain to people uh, that might not understand. Alright, so that's about it. Uh, now I will take you through a quick tour of our shop and also if you see anything that you uh, might want to know a little bit more about, either being a process or a machine or something, uh, just feel free to ask, uh, add a comment. I know that a lot of people are interested in the stuff that I do but uh, it's kind of becoming hard to post and keep up to date with all the threads that I've been on and all the forums. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment and I'll try to get to them as quickly as possible. And uh, if you also want to see a video made of something, uh, feel free to ask and I will see if I'll be able to have time to uh, make it. But uh, the shop that I'm about to take you through is actually just our cleaning room and CNC shop and also permanent mold. Also shell core. These are the shell cores that we make. The shell core machines over there. These are placed in permanent molds and green sand molds. I'll take you over to the permanent mold station.
here he's cleaning off some of the insulating coating on the permanent mold. This is actually an iron mold that's poured aluminum metal and the cores are placed inside. Then the uh, casting is pulled out. So you have the 2,000 pound furnaces at 1,400 degrees or uh, 1,300 degrees just depending on what job we're making. Here is the vibratory finishing machine behind all these boxes. Cleaning room, grinders, shipping department. This is our Mazak 500 six pallet fourth axis horizontal. A bunch of Pittman guns, and actually, if you've ever purchased a Pittman paintball gun, we are the company that's been making them since '87. Uh, when Pittman Sr. actually started his shop. Uh, here's a Brothers TC32B. This is a two pallet high speed uh, mill. It's capable of 16,000 16, RPM spindle speed. Uh, this is a machine that actually machines all of the Pittman paintball guns. Another Brothers. That's a quick turn 20. Another Mazak mill. And now I will take you to our permanent mold, or our die cast shop. All right, the ability I'm about to bring you into is our die cast shop um, and how this machine works is it's a uh, giant machine with four hydraulic pistons that produce about a million pounds of force and press a mold together uh, and metal is rammed in with an injection and that's how the paintball guns are actually made and after this building I will take you over to a building where we will actually be installing our own power coat system within the next month or two. You can see a trim press. This is where the parts are taken out of the machine and cut off. A uh, 6,000 pound gas fired furnace at about 1,200 degrees. I believe that sign is a bit redundant, but I guess they have to have it. It's uh, winter right now and inside it's about 70 degrees. During the summertime it can get up to 120. The uh, control box.
hopefully that gives you a bit better idea on how uh, some products are made. Um, we can produce about 900 paintball guns a shift and for die casting and the CNC machining of the guns can be done uh, about 400 per shift. So we can output about 2,500 a week in one shift, uh, doubles with every shift that you run. <laughs> but now I'm gonna take you into the building where we are gonna be installing a powder coat system. Okay, so this is the building that we'll be putting a powder coat system in. Uh, looks like they stored some die cast molds over here. <laughs> um, but within the next month or two, we hopefully will be installing an entire powder coat system in here and we'll be able to powder coat anything we want. I'm personally really excited about it because I'll be able to powder coat anything that I make. Um, but I believe we also be offering custom powder coats to anyone that might be wanting them. Uh, we are located in Muncie, Indiana. So if you live anywhere nearby, if you're building a car or a frame or body panels, whatever you want, uh, you can contact us. We can negotiate a price on any custom powder coat that you might want. And uh, we'll also be getting into hydro coating, uh, hopefully pretty soon too. So that's about it. Stay tuned for the next video.